everybody. Just for the record, I'm not in charge of the volume. <laughs> Hope you all well, had a good week. If you want to come in, find your seats, that'd be cool. We just want to start by saying a couple of huge thank yous to the youth team and to the, to the children's Power Zone team. We've had a couple of great events over the last seven days or so. We had 30 young people in here, 30 teenagers in here last Sunday for the youth event. And then yesterday we had a light party. We had another 29 um, children in here celebrating Jesus, learning more about him. And just in them two events, 59 young people, 59 young people of the next generation coming into our environment to discover more and more about Jesus. So we're just really excited about that and want to say thank you to everybody who's been involved in that. Why don't we, why don't we stand as we prepare our hearts for worship? Psalm 100 says this, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues for all generations. So as we step into this time of worship this morning, let's make the choice to enter his gates with thanksgiving. Let's lift our hearts in praise and let's worship him.
simple. I've run around everywhere, so feel free. We are still social distancing, but there's loads of space in the middle. You can turn around everywhere. We also know this song in lots and lots of languages. So we're going to have some fun this morning. We've got it in French. We've got it in Swahili and English. You may know it in another language, okay, but we're going to give it a go. You want worship in your own tongue, whatever that looks like this morning, okay. So we're going to go with the French, and Laura is going to help us with the French. It should be on the screen in a second.
in your own words to call out to God to fall afresh on us because we need him because life is more fun when you're full of the Holy Spirit because life makes more sense when you're full of the Holy Spirit because when you're full of the Holy Spirit you walk in wisdom you walk in power you walk in authority given to you by God himself when you walk with the Holy Spirit when you're full of the Holy Spirit miracles start to happen and start to flow because there's this river of life in you which is unstoppable because the undefeated champion of the world is the one that's in you through you and flowing out of you so our encouragement to you this morning is you lift your voice and you ask him right now will you fill me afresh will you fill us afresh will you pour yourself out in my life again in our lives again Holy Spirit we ask you to come afresh and anew this morning we ask you to come and touch each one of us afresh this morning and maybe where you are right now you just need to make the choice to actually invite him into your heart afresh Paul writes to Timothy and he says for this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you maybe that you choosing to fan into flame the gift of God in you is you making the choice Holy Spirit will you fill me afresh today will you consume us again every area of our lives we don't want to live outside of you we want to live lives full of you so come touch us afresh for the Spirit of God, the Spirit that God gave us doesn't make us timid, but gives us power and love and self-discipline. The Holy Spirit is here right now to give you power, to give you the love that you need, to give you that self-discipline. He's not asking you to be timid, but to be bold. He's not coming so you can go through the mundane. He's coming that you can live a life of power. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome you. We ask you to come. We need you. just press into him you're created to live full of him you're created to live full of him so drink drink You and him, you're enough. Take him by the hand. Whatever you're facing, you can come through it with Jesus. Whatever your difficult circumstance this morning, he is enough. He is enough. He is enough. He's enough for you to rise. He's enough for you to conquer. He's enough for you to fly. He's enough for you to overcome.
speak to your spirit. Come alive, spirit within me. Command the spirit of God in you to come alive. Give him permission to move. Father God, I ask you now that you release a fresh wave of your Holy Spirit on your people. That you fill them afresh in these moments with power, with love, with a wisdom, with a grace that they've never experienced or known before. Father God, will you bless us your children with the capacity to host more of you will you let your river flow in Jesus name Amen and it's in the atmosphere of his presence that we have the privilege this morning just to take up an offering I know a number of you give online or on your phones or whatever, and that's all cool. But if you're in the room here this morning and you want to give into a physical box with physical money, this is your moment. Malcolm's at the back. If you want to do it on a credit card, you're more than welcome. But we're just going to take a moment and we're just going to say thank you to God for his ongoing provision and faithfulness to us. Jesus, we thank you that you are enough, that you are our provider. And life full of you is one of abundance in every season. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to hit play on some notices and then Nick is going to come and share. And we just celebrate Nick, we honour her, the book. She, she has with Jesus and just her ability to go deep into the Word of God and to bring out the revelation of his heart for us this morning. So notices and then let's welcome Nick. I hope you're all well. Next Saturday, the Plaza Healing Centre is open again from 10am until noon. If you need physical healing, our team would be delighted to help you encounter Jesus the Healer. Come to the Plaza Centre or book a Zoom appointment through the Plaza Healing Centre page on our website before Saturday and we'll send you a Zoom invitation. Thank you to all those who helped with the Youth Nerf Party and the Children's Light Party. These events couldn't have happened without you and everyone who attended had loads of fun. Signed up for the Fellowship Party? If you need more information or help to do so, just get in touch. We'd love to have as many of us together as we can for fun and fellowship. A quick reminder that the church meeting has been rescheduled to 7.30pm next Sunday. Good morning everyone. Hey, hey, hey. Great to see everyone looking so awake after an extra hour's sleep, yeah? Unless you've got small children, I'm sure. It doesn't make any difference. Um, I think that's one of the perks of this time of year because I'm a summer person um, and everything else is just dark mornings and evenings and, and all of that. But yeah, it's great to be with you this morning on what I'm sure we all know is the 31st of October, a day that's become unfortunately a national holiday of Halloween in our country um, and around the world. But as I knew I was going to be preaching today, um, I was asking God what specifically he wanted to say on this day. Um, and then I was encouraged when I listened to Bob's preach from last week, because I couldn't make it last Sunday, uh, and I heard 
part of what God was putting on my heart to talk about this morning. So that's great. So I really feel like God wants to speak to us about spiritual warfare. Part of our role on this earth is to fight against evil and all the works of the devil. Jesus himself taught us to pray, deliver us from evil. Spiritual warfare is part of our life as an apostolic family. And so I'm going to unpack that this morning, recap a little bit of what Bob said um, for anyone who missed it. And if you did, I really, really encourage you to make sure that you did hear that last, that last preach from Bob, especially the prophetic word that he brought. Um, and then I'm going to unpack what I think God is saying practically to us about this. But I'm first going to open, ask you sorry, to open your Bibles to Ephesians 6, and then we're starting with verse 10, and it will be up on the screen the whole morning. Um, and it's a really well-known passage, and it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. If you want to wake yourselves up this morning, feel free to read along with me. But uh, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate, breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith for which you can extinguish all the flame and arrows of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So first of all, I just want to point out, it's great, isn't it, that when we're talking about the reality of evil in our world, that this passage starts with, be strong in the Lord. It says, his mighty power. And so I want to make it really clear this morning that this is a message of hope and power, and not a message of defeat or doom or gloom. If you've ever read The Screwtape Letters by C.S. Lewis, such a fantastic book, um, and he says something really profound. He says, there are two equal but opposite errors in which our race face come fall about the devil. Sorry. One is to disbelieve their existence. The other is to believe and to feel an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. As Christians, we need to recognize the reality of spiritual warfare, but we must ensure we keep our focus on Jesus. As Christians, we have to be aware of what's going on in the world around us. We can't bury our head in the sand, we can't ignore the evil of the world, and we can't stay hiding safe within our church walls. We must be aware of what we're up against, of where God's standard is not met, of where God's rule and truth and love is being resisted or overshadowed, but we are called to take the power of Christ to meet it, to see our community, our towns, and our countries saved. And I'm definitely not saying this morning that we need to wallow in the evening evil or watch hour after hour of depressing news or YouTube or whatever else feeds that narrative because that can actually lead us to feeling defeated or overwhelmed or like we might want to give up. But what we must do is know what we're up against and then focus on that amazing biblical truth that we've been given power and authority on this earth to trample on the heads of serpents and over all the power of the enemy. And that's Luke 10, 19 for anyone who wants the reference. So that is our message of hope this morning. It starts in Ephesians 6, 10 with, Finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. And that was mentioned this morning, power. Bob encouraged us last week to be bold. Be strong in the Lord because his power is mighty. We have our mighty God behind us who's given us the Holy Spirit. We've got access to his mighty power through him and the authority to go out in the world and defeat the works of the enemy. And we know that this is possible because we read about Jesus doing it. We read that he healed people and cast out demons and we've seen testimony after testimony of God answering prayers individually and corporately in SCF as well and amazing moves of God all around the world. And Bob said these words last week which I think were amazing. Knowing that it can be done, knowing that it has been done, gives you the boldness to go and do things that you wouldn't normally. So we know that it was done by Jesus when he walked the earth, and we know that in John 14, 12, he said we will do greater works than him. So there's a boldness that comes from knowing that it can be done and it has been done. 
So, wake up everyone, turn to the person next to you and say, Jesus has given me authority over all the power of the enemy. Say to the person next to you, I will trample on snakes and scorpions. Well, hey, I like a bit of not just me. So that was from Luke 10, verse 19. For those taking reference, you were just quoting scripture. Um, so if we are aware that we need some spiritual warfare and there is a need for that and we don't want to be complacent, like as Bob read from 1 Peter 5 last week, we need to be alert sober of mind for our enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour well then what practically do we do so pete Gregg says that there are three practical courses of action for spiritual warfare pray it practice it preach it so i'm going to look at them in turn number one pray it as christians we have been given the greatest most powerful tool for any situation and circumstance prayer Because of what Jesus did for us, we can take authority in prayer and we are seated in heavenly places with Christ, partnering with God to exercise his authority and advance his kingdom. Two years ago, we received some prophetic words as a church to take back that mantle of prayer. And I stood up and preached from Chronicles about reigniting our prayer life. And since then, we've watched for two years as the church has come together to pray. The Kingdom Come WhatsApp group is still buzzing daily with prayer requests um, and answered prayers, testimonies. And I know people will meet regularly and pray. It's been amazing to see that happen. Jesus taught us to intercede and to go for spiritual warfare. So if we continue to read in this passage, Ephesians 6, we see in verse 12 that it says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So prayer has to be our ultimate weapon. We're up against things that we can't always see, we can't always stand in front of, but we have got prayer. And we also know that Jesus has already won the battle. The devil is ultimately defeated. When Jesus returns, the devil's time on this earth will be over. There will be no final battle. There's no question of whether Jesus or the devil is going to win. It has been done. It is finished. The battle was won on Calvary when Jesus went down into hell, took the keys, came back and ascended to heaven later on. So the enemy will not win. But we do know that we live in that tension between the victory being won and Jesus' final return, where the enemy still prowls like a roaring lion looking to devour. He still tries. He still kills, steals, and destroys. But the ultimate truth is that he has no power over us. We're able to use the authority that's been given us to stand firm against him. Do we always see an immediate answer to prayer? No. I'm sure you're all thinking this. But that's where perseverance in prayer comes in. Pray without ceasing. And I think the story of Daniel in the Old Testament is... A good reminder of that, if you look in Daniel chapters 9 and 10, you see that Daniel was reading the scripture of Jeremiah, and as he's doing so, he gets this revelation that the people of Jerusalem, they're not meant to be in captivity. God actually has a better, greater plan for them. So he sees those plans of God, but he can also see that they're not currently playing out that way. So what does he do? In chapter 9, verse 3, it says he turned to prayer and pet petition in fasting and in sackcloth and ashes for about 20 odd days he fasted and he prayed he persevered in prayer he thought god wants one thing it's not happening i'm going to pray and fast in order to pull in the purpose of god the will of god i'm going to persevere in prayer and then in chapter 10 when an angel appears to him which is described in verse 6 with a body like topaz face like lightning, eyes like flaming torches, arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and the voice like the sound of a multitude, which I just put in because I just thought it was an awesome description of something that sounds quite scary in some ways. Um, the, The angel says, your words were heard on day one, but the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me for 21 days, which I think is really interesting. I mean, is that an example there then of what we see in Ephesians 12, sorry, 6 verse 12, where it says, our struggle 
is against rulers and authorities, principalities and powers. An insight here into the angelic realm and the warfare that's going on when we pray. Sometimes God hears us on day one, but there's a battle for the will of God going on in the, in the supernatural. So we persevere in prayer. So that was pray it. Number two was practice it. Live it out daily. Do we pray when things get tough? Do we pray without ceasing? If we continue to read in Ephesians 6, verse 11, it says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Daily we must practice putting on that armor of God, which I'll talk specifically about in a minute. But we must not only pray against the enemy and his schemes, but we must practical, practice spiritual warfare in our daily lives. Which I know sounds dramatic, but really it's quite simple. The verse we just, just read there used the word schemes, the devil's schemes. If you look in the King John Version, it says wiles, the wiles of the devil, which the dictionary defines as devious and cunning strategies. The Amplified Version says schemes and strategies and deceits of the devil. So whichever version you read, we can see he's a strategist. There's schemes there. So what do we do? Well, we need to find the strategy, and then we need to practice living in the equal but opposite spirit. And Graham Cook talks about cultivating the fruit of the spirit as personal warfare against what the enemy is trying to do in your life. When we move in the fruit of the spirit, which Galatians tells us is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We can turn everything the enemy seeks to bring against us around because we're moving in the opposite spirit. And he says this, which is one of my favorite things I've ever heard someone preach before. And he does say this quite a lot, actually. He says, you can exhaust the enemy with your love for people. You can depress the enemy by learning joy. You can weary him by be becoming peaceful. You can demoralize him with your patience. You can discourage him with your kindness. You can overcome him with your goodness. You can debilitate him with acts of faithfulness. You can trouble him with your gentleness. You can dismay him with your self-control. You can dishearten him with your, face, your faith. You can weaken him with your mercy. You can intimidate him with your intimacy. And you can devastate him with grace. You can paralyze him with compassion, and you can cripple him with humility. I'd read all that again because it's so good, except for, you know. And he also says, he's been doing the opposite to that list to you for years, so it's time to get your own back. So what is the enemy trying to do in your life? Is he trying to steal your peace? Is he trying to depress you, dishearten you? Well, then it's time for you to walk in peace and joy and faith so that you can undo his work. It's time to get your own back, church. So tell the person next to you, I can exhaust the enemy with my love for people. Tell them I can depress him with my joy. Tell them I can dishearten him with my faith. I can devastate him with grace. So let's apply this wider than our personal lives as well then. What is he doing in the world around us? What is he doing in our spheres of influence? So as an example, in my current place of work, there is an atmosphere currently of division, demoralization, and the feeling of being underappreciated. And I know that none of this is God's plan for us, and so I can see the strategy of the enemy there in my workplace. And so I need to move in the equal but opposite spirit. So within my team, I'm working to make sure that they feel unified, they feel appreciated, they're thanked regularly for what they're doing and all their hard work, and they're built up and encouraged daily, moving in the opposite spirit. And that's in my immediate team, but fortunately for me, I have some influence across the whole of the school as well. And so I've taken on as my personal role for this year, staff appreciation. I can move in the opposite spirit with the power of God behind me in my workplace and the fruits of the spirit. And I believe that that is spiritual warfare. With the help of Mark, who identified that when I spoke to them about it a few weeks ago. But actually, yeah, it is fair. So all of us in this room have spheres of influence. 
We talk about being an apostolic family that changes our spheres of influences and brings heaven to earth. This is part of that. So what's the strategy of the enemy in your sphere of influence? What's the opposite spirit that you can start moving in? When we live in our society with integrity amongst lies, peace amongst discord, anxiety and chaos, joy amongst depression and sorrow, generosity amongst greed, love amongst hatred, then we're fighting the schemes of the devil. We're demonstrating a good God, a worthy Father, a mighty and holy Lord, and we're bringing heaven to earth. And this is spiritual warfare. So finally, the last one, we've had pray it, we've had practice it, and now we've got preach it. And I don't mean from the front here, I mean the greatest way that we can advance the kingdom of heaven and undo the works of the enemy is by preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and bringing people to him. We have got such good news to spread. And part of spiritual warfare is taking ground for Christ. If we read about the, the armor of God, which we read about earlier, we can see that a lot of it is about being defensive, a lot of them the defensive pieces, about standing ground. Doesn't mean we have to go charge in to fight, but we don't allow ground to be taken. We've got the truth buckled around our waist when the enemy is telling us lies. We have the shield of faith when our prayers aren't answered, when we're feeling confused. We look to the truth of God's word and we keep our faith. That's our armor. They're all defensive except for the sword and the shoes. With the sword of the spirit, we fight. And with the shoes of the gospel, we advance the kingdom of Christ. We increase the church. The greatest bit of spiritual warfare you can ever do is preach the gospel and bring someone to Jesus. And back in Roman times when they're talking about these shoes, in Roman times the carriers of the good news of victory would literally run with it. They would run and they would scream it. We're free, we've won, the emperor's won, and they would run to people. Are we going to get anywhere if we're speaking the same evil, negativity, the same circumstances as the world? Or do we need to go out telling them that we actually have the alternate option, the thing that will save them and set them free? So, where is the enemy taking ground? And are we defending ourselves, our church, our families, our town, our communities, and our world? I'd like to end with a really famous story about Smith Wigglesworth. The story that goes that he awoke in the night and he saw Satan himself manifesting in all of his terror and he said, oh, it's only you. And then he went back to sleep. How depressing for the enemy. Are we a people in this room who say, oh, it's only you. And then we go back to sleep or we go back to praying or we go back to doing what we're doing because we know that when we stand in faith and we call upon our mighty God with confidence and belief in our authority that we will see victory. Today is Halloween, a day set aside in our country's calendar to celebrate all things gory, violent, evil, a day to glorify things like murder, celebrate insanity, to laugh at evil, but it's also a sacred day for religions that directly oppose Christianity. And does this strike the fear in us, or are we indifferent? Have we just become complacent? We just don't notice so much anymore? Perhaps today is the day that we decide to make a stand again, to put a stake in the ground, increase our warfare against the evil. Bob shared a prophetic word last week about not becoming complacent. I don't think he's here this morning, so I hope he doesn't mind what I'm going to do next. But he said, the devil is a prowling lion that we must be bold and strong. And he asked you to go and weigh that word to seek God over it. So I hope it's okay for me to be as bold as to ask you now a few things. If you've weighed it and you feel it's a word for us, that you'll stand with me, and that if you believe that you wish to make a stand against the schemes of the devil in your full armor of God, that you'll also take a stand with me now. Because today, we're gonna serve notice to Satan and all his angels and to any of his servants that we will not be intimidated that we have not ceased fighting, that we will not allow any more ground to be taken in our personal lives, in our families, in our church, in our town and in our spheres of influence. So if you stood and you want to join me, please now speak the words from 2 Timothy 1.7 that Pete actually spoke earlier anyway. 
um, repeat after me, we have not been given a spirit of timidity, but of power and of love and of self-control. We're renewing here and now our dedication to the command and the promise of the Lord Jesus when he said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. So this morning we're going to continue to fight, we're going to continue to hold our ground, we're going to promise to take new ground for Christ, and we're going to take new territory from the stronghold of the devil. With the power of Christ behind us, we will trample on the heads of snakes and scorpions in Jesus' name. So this morning to end up, we've got quite a lot of time, so I'd like us to just worship together because one of the best things we can do is just to sing the praises of the Lord and just declare that out. And then at some point as well, Pete and I are going to take us into a time of prayer, of spiritual warfare. And so thank you, church, for your response. Um, and let's just take back that ground this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Peace, the storms around. 
to worship we're also going to have a time of prayer for those that want it um, or need it so my suggestion is that right now if you feel in your personal life that the enemy has got strategies or schemes against you or perhaps a member of your family and you would like prayer for, for that please can you just raise your hand um, so that someone or a few people near you can come um, and gather around you and pray with you so that's for those of you in your personal life um, so could you just have a look around and if there's someone nearby, grab someone else and just go and pray. Um, we're moving in the opposite spirit. We're undoing the strategies and we're giving heavenly strategies in place. And then if in your workplace you would like the boldness, the courage, the strength, you would like to be um, filled up with the power of God this morning, you'd like to be encouraged, you'd like to have prophetic words spoken over you, then please could you come forward socially distanced in the area at the front and then myself and Pete would be happy to pray for you and if there's a lot of you then personal ministry team we'd love it if you could help as well but if you want to be empowered to go out into the world as an apostolic family and you want to go and you want to undo the schemes of the enemy in your workplace in your community then come forward this morning we'd love to impart that power into you this morning from Jesus it all comes from him 
And if none of those apply to you and you just want to spend some time interceding for things that are going on in the world or the things you can see the enemy doing around us, then feel free to grab someone or do that on your own or just continue to worship. But as we keep proclaiming today that Jesus, Jesus makes the darkness tremble, the darkness around us today, especially on this day where we know that people will be gathering to actually celebrate the devil rather than Jesus, we're just going to keep on declaring that into the atmosphere and it's going to shake South End. And hopefully further, we will believe that in the name of Jesus. Off we go. up in the balcony who've had their hands up no one's going to the lady in the light green and the lady in the purple so could you go and pray for them please
We're going to officially close the meeting now, but if you still need prayer or anything like that, then obviously please stay on and, and make sure that you do do find someone. Um, and yeah, I just pray that you are able to just go out this week in the boldness of Christ, with his strength and power behind you, um, able to shift atmospheres, able to preach the good news of the gospel. Hey, wouldn't it be amazing if every single person the enemy tried to use against us, we brought them to Jesus? So let's just pray for those divine encounters that strategy, prophetic words, visions and wisdom, and just have a really blessed week, guys. In Jesus' name, amen.